Number 10, The Dog Boy. The small town of Quitman, located in Cleburne County, Arkansas, is known for its rich history and, and picturesque Victorian era homes. However, among these charming homes lies a dark history that has led to the town being known for its haunted houses. One such house is the Beatus House, a large home on Mulberry Street. This house has had a long and troubled history dating back to the late 19th century. The house was originally built by the Garrett family in the late 1800s. It was a grand and impressive home and for many years it was the pride of the Quitman. However, in the early 1950s, the house was sold to the Beatty's family. The Beatty's family, consisting of Floyd and Aileen, were childish for many years until they had a son in 1954 named Gerald Floyd Beatty's. Gerald Beatty's was a difficult child from an early age and he was known for being very vicious and cruel to others. He also had a strange interest in collecting stray animals and later torturing them. Then as he grew older, his behavior became more sinister and he allegedly kept his elderly parents imprisoned in the upstairs part of the house where he would only feed them when he decided it was time for them to eat. He was also known for physically abusing his father and throwing him out of an upstairs window on one occasion. It is believed by the locals that the spirits of the Garrett family along with the spirit of Gerald Beatty's still haunt the house to this day. The haunt has been vacant for many years and local residents avoid it at all costs. Number 9, The Boggy Creek Monster The small town of Falk, Arkansas has long been captivated by the legend of the Boggy Creek Monster. According to the local legend, the creature, said to be between 7 to 8 feet tall and weighing around 300 pounds, is covered in thick long hair and has been spotted roaming the area for over a century. The first reported sightings date back to 1834, with a surge in sightings around folk in the 1900s. In 1997 alone, residents reported spotting the monster more than 40 times. The creature is often thought to be nocturnal, but one hunter even reported a sighting in broad daylight in the Sulphur River Wildlife Area near Falk in 2000. The legend of the Boggy Creek Monster has been the subject of several films, with the most notable being 1973's The Legend of Boggy Creek. The movie, which centers around a supposed encounter with the beast by Bobby Ford, was most likely shot on location in Falk and brought the legend to the attention of millions of people. The film also brought an economic boost to the region, with many cast members being locals or nearby college students. The famous encounter that the film is based on actually occurred in 1971. The Fords claimed that the Boggy Creek monster attacked their home late on the night of May 1st. According to Elizabeth Ford, the creature reached through her screen window but was chased away by Bobby and his brother Dan. Unsatisfied, the monster reportedly returned shortly after midnight and tossed Bobby to the ground. Bobby was taken to the St. Michael Hospital in Texarkana and treated for large gashes across his back. Although no traces of blood were found at the Ford's home, three toed footprints were found near the house, there were scratches on the porch, and the siding and a window were both damaged. Number 8 Railroad Track Lights There is a supposed haunted railroad track in Crowset, Arkansas, and after many reports, it has now become a hot spot for paranormal enthusiasts. According to the locals, a ghostly light appears to move up and down the tracks as if it's being held by a disembodied Body spirits. Some local residents claim that the source of this ghostly light is the spirit of a man who was hit by a train and decapitated, and now his ghost walks these tracks searching for his head. This is what it kind of looks like. Oh my god, it's right. Daddy, I'm scared. No, I'm not kidding, Daddy, I swear. It's in the middle of the road. No, I'm not kidding. I'm not. Many people who have visited the tracks have reported strange encounters with the ghostly light. Some claim that when standing on the tracks, the light will come towards them, disappear, then reappear on the other side. There are many videos available online that capture this strange experience, but it is unclear if the light is just an ordinary sight on the track or if there's actually something paranormal going on in the area. Number 7, The Vanishing Hitchhiker In central Arkansas, there is a chilling ghost story that's commonly told around Halloween, introducing the tale of The Vanishing Hitchhiker. According to the legend, travelers on the dark road of Arkansas Highway 365 sometimes encounter a young girl walking in the pouring rain in a torn white dress while crossing one spooky bridge. Some say they have stopped to give the young girl a ride. Those who stop say that they pick her up and drive her to her nearby home. However, when they arrive, the drivers discover that the girl has suddenly disappeared. Those who choose to knock on the front door of the home the young girl takes them to learn from a woman who answers that the young girl used to live at the home but was killed in a car accident, and she usually regularly hitchhikes a ride home, according to legend. One man recalled the time this happened to him where he picked up the girl and even gave the girl his jacket. As expected, when they arrived, she disappeared, and when he went to the door, a woman answered, and he explained 
explain what had just occurred. The woman at the door said, quote, that young girl is my daughter who was killed years ago. She hitchhikes back home once a year. The young man then drove to the cemetery to see the young girl's grave. There he found his coat draped over her tombstone. Number six, the gauze row. Arkansas not only has haunted homes and stories, but they also have their own terrifying creatures. These were known as the gauze row. This monster is believed to be a massive 20 foot long creature with tusk and claws. But that's not even the most interesting part of them. On January 31st, 1897, the Arkansas Gazette, a popular newspaper of the time, published an article written by Albert Smithy that included the sketch of this creature, and also an account of the first known encounter with it. The encounter, as described by Smithy, took place in the Ozark Forest, where a man named William Miller was traveling through the tiny town of Blanco. Miller had heard reports of livestock and pets being found dead, so he formed the group to track down the predator. They eventually encountered a creature that was 20 feet long with tusk and claws, as well as a row of horns along its back and a tail that ended in a blade-like point. The group supposedly killed the beast, but the body that Miller swore he shipped to the Smithsonian never arrived. The eerie scream that was heard in the forest before the encounter, which sounded like a gaw row, gave the urban legend its name. There are several possible explanations for the legend of this creature. Smithy may have just wanted attention for claiming to know the details of this elusive creature, or the story may have been a case of mistaken identity. The tusk and horns could have belonged to a razorback pig, or since the creature was said to have emerged from the lake, an alligator could have been the culprit. But despite the lack of concrete evidence, the legend of the Gosro has continued to captivate the imagination of the citizens of Arkansas for over 125 years. It may be a tall tale, but you never know what could be lurking in those forests. In the hump of our list, we have the Eureka Springs. Eureka Spring, Arkansas is a small town that is known for its immense paranormal activity. While some see it primarily as a gorgeous little Victorian village and a wonderful place to react, others consider it a hotbed for paranormal activity and also one of the most haunted places in Arkansas. Both perspectives are valid, of course, but mostly Eureka Springs is complex, a place where a vibrant, quirky little town is overrun with hauntings. Don't let the cheery buildings and nice folks fool you. The souls of the departed lives in Eureka Springs too. One of the most famous haunted places in the town is the 1886 Crescent Hotel. The hotel has been featured on the Travel Channel and is famous for its haunted room 218, where the ghost of Michael, who fell to his death during the hotel's construction, is said to reside. Guests have reported feeling a presence in the room, and some have even claimed to have seen the ghostly figure of Michael himself. The entire Crescent Hotel is full of ghosts, partly because it was once used as a cancer hospital, complete with a morgue that is also one of the most haunted places on the grounds. Number four, the Allen House. The Allen House in Monticello, Arkansas is a beautiful 1906 Queen Anne Victorian style home, but it has a dark history that has made it a popular spot for ghost hunters and history enthusiasts alike. The house was built by local businessman Joe Lee Allen and was intended to be a showpiece in the town with impressive porch columns and neoclassical design with a touch of gothic decoration. Allen along with his wife and three daughters moved into the family home and for a while they were content. Allen's business ventures thrive and all was well until his death in 1917. Then in 1949, another tragedy happened that would cast a shadow over the house's majestic appearance. During the last week of 1948, daughter Liddell Allen poisoned herself after consuming mercury cyanide. The new year would begin on a dark note with Liddell's death. For nearly 40 years, her room was sealed off by her mother. Then after Mrs. Allen died in 1954, the home was sectioned into apartments and remained a rental property run by the Allen family. Tenants began seeing strange things and experiencing paranormal activity not long after they moved in. Shadowy figures would appear in photographs taken by residents and furniture was rearranged with no one having touched anything. Objects around the house would disappear into thin air and ever since the story of Liddell grew into urban legend and the Allen house was declared haunted by both residents and locals alike. Number three, the Cotter Bridge. The RM Ruthven Rainbow Arc Bridge, also known as the Cotter Bridge, is a man-made wonder located in the town of Cotter, North Arkansas. Built in 1930 and renovated in 2004, it spans the White River and is known for its architectural marvel, trout fishing, and natural beauty. But beneath its lovely trusses, the bridge is also home to some spooky legends and ghost stories that have been passed down through generations. One of the most popular legends of the Cotter Bridge is the ghostly children that play on it during some nights. 
Visitors have reported hearing their laughter and chatter, but when they look for the children, they just disappear. While there is no concrete evidence to prove that these children are ghosts, the eerie and mysterious nature of their presence have left many visitors wondering. Another chilling tale that surrounds the Cotter Bridge is the ghost of a woman who is said to be chased by hounds. Visitors have reported hearing her screams and the bang of the hounds, but when they look for the source, they see nothing. The identity of the woman remains unknown and the reason for her ghostly presence is also a mystery. Some say that she may have been the victim of a tragic event that occurred near the bridge, while others believe she may have been the spirit of someone who drowned in the White River below. Number 2. The Gurdon Light The Gurdon Ghost Light is a mysterious and unexplained phenomenon that has been observed and documented in the small town of Gurdon, Arkansas. The light, which is said to be an eerie white-blue color that sways back and forth and moves around on a horizon, has been reported by locals and tourists alike. One popular legend surrounding the light is that it's the ghost of a railway worker who was killed on the job. According to this theory, the ghost is said to be carrying a lantern and roaming the tracks searching for something. Another theory suggests that the light is the ghost of a railway worker who fell in front of a train and lost his head, and the light is coming from the lantern he carried in life as he searches for his missing head. While the true origins of the Gurdon Light ghost are unknown, there are a few natural theories as to what it might be. Some scientists have suggested it could be caused by highway lights reflecting through the trees, but historians and local residents disagree as the light has been reported since before the highway was even built. Number 1. The Pea Ridge National Military Park The Pea Ridge National Military Park in Arkansas is a place where history and a mystery collide. The battlefield is a haunting reminder of the brutal and bloody battle that took place here in 1960 during the Civil War. Here, the Confederate Army, outnumbered by the Union Army, fought bravely but ultimately lost the battle, resulting in the deaths of nearly 3,400 men and boys. Visitors to the battlefield have reported strange and eerie experiences that seem to be connected to the intense history of the place. Many have reported hearing cannon fire in the night, feeling strange presences following them around the battlefield, and hearing the shouts of boys who died on the bloody ground. The Confederate Army, made up of mostly boys, Texicans, and Missourians, were advancing north in hopes of capturing St. Louis in Missouri. They were exhausted, running low on feud and ammunition, and their spirits were dampened by early losses at Pea Ridge. Meanwhile, the Union Army, led by a commander who was considered more of a politician than a war tested general, rallied around a hot breakfast, proud of their success on the first day of battle, and glad to have faced down an army that significantly outnumbered them. The battle lasted for two days, March 6th through March 8th, and at 10.30 a.m. on the morning of March 8th, the Confederate Army began its retreat, and by that time, the smoke cleared, the battlefield was littered with the bodies of fallen soldiers. The eerie feeling of the battlefield may be due to the intense history, and considering that 3,400 people lost their lives here, it's not a surprise you may see at least one spirit. Number 10, Goody Cole. In 1656, good wife Eunice Cole, otherwise known as Goody Cole, was convicted of witchcraft and suffered through the harrowing experience of being tried and punished for a crime she may have not committed. After being released from prison in 1670, Cole returned to Hampton, but unfortunately, her troubles were far from over. Despite being found innocent during her second trial, Cole was treated like an outcast by her neighbors and was forced to survive by scavenging for berries. Legend has it that since her death, Cole has been responsible for a number of tragedies in Hampton, including the sinking of a ship that killed 8 people, as well as the haunting of the town in general. Eventually, many of the town folk would report her many times and eventually they feared her and coined her with the name Witch of Hampton. Finally, in 1938, the town finally exonerated Cole and acknowledged that she may have been the victim of a terrible injustice. May have. It wasn't until the 1960s that a grave marker was set up in her honor and since then, Cole has been regarded as a much less harmful spirit. Number 9. The Legend of Chikora The Legend of Chikora is a well-known tale in New Hampshire, particularly in the White Mountains region. According to the legend, Chikora is a mound in the White Mountains that is home to a mysterious and fearsome creature known as the Chikora Monster. The Chikora Monster is said to be a large furry beast with glowing red eyes and a ferocious appetite. It is said to roam the forest preying on any animal or person that crosses its path. Some say that the creature is a mutant created by toxic waste, while others believe it is a supernatural being with powers beyond human understanding. However, according to the legend, Takora was a proud Indian chief who left his son in the care of a white man while he traveled. When he returned, he found that his son had died in an accident. In a rage, Takora killed the white man's family, starting a cycle of revenge. The white man chased Takora to the top of the mountain, which is now known as his name, and as the Indian chief prepared to throw himself off of the mountain rather than give in, he uttered a very bad curse. Since then, the mountain is said to have been the site of strange occurrences 
performances, which many people attribute to this curse. Number eight, Cochico Mills. The Cochico Mills in Dover, New Hampshire has a dark history attached to it. Back in 1907, the building nearly burned down to the ground, which ended up killing several workers. And ever since, the reports of ghostly activity have persisted. Apart from those passed away in the fire, the Mills has also been said to be haunted by the ghost of a foreign worker named Mary. According to legend, Mary was a young woman who worked at the Cochico Mills in the 19th century. One day, while working on the upper floors of the mills, she accidentally fell to her death. And since her tragic accident, her ghost is said to haunt the Cochico Mills, particularly on the upper floors where she fell. Many people claim to have seen her ghost, often describing her as a young woman with long hair and a very, very sad expression on her face. Some say that they have heard her footsteps echoing through the empty corridors of the mill, or people who are left alone at night have said to encounter her completely and even spoken to her. Number seven, the Omni Mount Washington Hotel. The Omni Mount Washington Hotel is a luxurious and historic hotel located in the picturesque White Mountains of New Hampshire. Built in 1902 by entrepreneur Joseph Stickney, the hotel was the last of its kind to be built in the area, marking the end of the Grand Hotel era. Mr. Stickney married the beautiful Caroline Foster, who was 27 years his junior, just 10 years before the grand opening of the hotel. Tragically, Mr. Stickney passed away a year after the hotel's grand opening, leaving Coraline to inherit the hotel and all of its wealth. Caroline, who was known to be a little eccentric, eventually married a French prince and spent her winters in France, but she still maintained a strong connection to the Mount Washington Hotel. Legend has it that Coraline's ghost haunts the hotel to this day, with reports of a figure wandering the halls and even sitting on the edges of guests' bed. It is also said that lights here flicker on and off at will, and the sounds of crying babies can be heard in the ballroom when no one is there. Guests can stay in the Princess Suite room 314, where Caroline's four-poster bed is still used to this day. And if you don't believe me, just ask any of the staff about their experience with the alleged ghost, and I guarantee they'll have a story of their own. This natural historic landmark offers not only the possibility of a paranormal encounter, but it also has these stunning views of the surrounding mountains, so visit here for whatever reason you want. Number six, the Saco River. The Saco River, which flows for 136 miles from Crawford Notch to Saco Bay in Maine, has a long and mysterious history. The river is known for its varying water conditions, ranging from quiet stretches to rough rapids with fast currents. It is also known for its dark legend, which dates back to the early 1600s. According to the legend, Chief Squando of the Saco tribe was canoeing on the river with his wife and infant son when three English sailors snatched the baby from the mother and threw him into the water. The sailors were reportedly drunk and wanted to see if Native American infants were strong swimmers, as they had heard. The mother was able to rescue the baby, but he tragically passed away just a few days later. Chief Squando was said to have magical powers, and he placed a curse on the river, declaring that it would claim three white lives annually. From that day forward, the Saco River has been known as the River of Death. The legend of the river curse has been passed down through the years, and it is said that the river has claimed many, many lives, both of tourists and locals alike. There are no exact records of the lives that have been lost to the river, as the legend dates all the way back 300 years ago. Some say that the curse is to blame for these tragedies, while others attribute them to the river's strong currents and dangerous rapids. Whatever the cause, the Saco River is a force of nature that demands respect and caution from all those who venture near its banks. Number five, the 1686 house. The 1686 house in Kingston, New Hampshire, is a restaurant that was originally a home, one of the oldest ones in the town. It has a rich history and is also rumored to be haunted. Haunted. So this is when a team of paranormal investigators and a psychic decided to visit and try to capture evidence of any paranormal activity. The team was equipped with infrared cameras, digital recording devices, video equipment, monitors, and also received permission from the Gillespie family who owns the property. Psychic Jeff Noyle is reported sensing the presence of watching Indians, an older man leading a horse and a carriage, and a man sitting in the corner of a dining room that was part of the original barn. Michael Sullivan and Karen Mosey, the paranormal investigators, also captured an image on video and Mosey recorded voices, including comments such as, those are locked, there's hundreds of angels, and I'm frightful, and get those things off of you. Cold spots, which are thought to indicate the presence of ghosts, were also detected in this old building. As well, Noel sensed a presence of children playing in a small dining room, and on the brighter side, he also sensed a loving presence and stolen kisses in a stairwell. 
The team also found an old root cellar in the basement. Warren Noyles reported that parents used to hide their children during storms. It is impossible to say for certain whether the reported paranormal activity was genuine or not, but the 1686 house is certainly a place with an interesting history and a potential for otherworldly encounters. Number four, Portsmouth Lighthouse. The Portsmouth Harbor Lighthouse in New Hampshire is said to be haunted by the ghost of Joshua Card, who is one of its most famous and dedicated lighthouse keepers. Card served as a keeper of the lighthouse for 35 years, from 1874 all the way to 1909, and he was known for his intelligence, punctuality, sense of humor, and kindness to his neighbors and visitors. However, after his retirement and death in 1911, stories began to circulate about Card's ghost haunting the lighthouse and the surrounding area. Reports of paranormal activity at the lighthouse included shadowy figures being seen, voices being heard, and figures appearing in broad daylight dressed in old-fashioned keeper's uniforms. The ghost hunt team for the television show Ghost Hunters investigated these reports and concluded that the lighthouse was likely haunted. It's believed that Card's spirit remains at the lighthouse due to his love for the location and his dedication to maintaining it during his lifetime. Visitors to the lighthouse have reported strange occurrences such as feeling his presence, hearing unexplained footsteps and voices, and seeing really weird shadows and lights all around the area. Some have even claimed to have had conversations with his ghost, who is said to still be watching over the lighthouse and the waters it guides ships through. Number three, the Blair Bridge. The Blair Covered Bridge in Campton, New Hampshire is a historic structure with a reputation for being a paranormal hotspot. It was originally built in 1829, but in only a few months, it was burned down by an arsonist named Lem Parker, who claimed that strange voices told him to do it. He made claims towards hearing demonic voices and growls inside of his head. Despite Parker's confession, he was never convicted due to a lack of witnesses. And after the bridge was rebuilt in 1870, it served as an important transportation route to connecting various highways and roads. However, it has also been the site of numerous unusual accidents and incidents, leading some to believe it is cursed. Some say it is haunted by an evil spirit, while others attribute the bad luck to coincidence. Then in 2011, the bridge was severely damaged by a giant limb during Hurricane Irene, causing over $2.5 million in damages. But back to the paranormal, other visitors claim to see shadowy figures when they walk near or even over the bridge, where they are known to call out your name in an attempt to bait you close to the edge of the bridge. Whether or not this bridge is cursed or haunted, anything with the name Witch or even Blair is enough to make me find an alternative route. Number 2, Blood Cemetery. With the word blood in your name, there's really nothing good to expect. Blood Cemetery in Hollis, New Hampshire is a place that is rumored to be haunted by the ghost of Abel Blood, who has been buried there since the year 1867. According to some reports, the finger carved on Blood's headstone points heavenward during the day and then points towards the ground at night. Fiona Broom, a paranormal investigator and author, has heard accounts of this phenomenon from people she trusts and has also experienced difficulty taking photographs in the cemetery. Two friends decided to go here in order to investigate paranormal activity back in 1990. While there, one of the friends saw a headstone with an engraved hand that appeared to be leaking a brownish rust colored fluid. The other friend went to see the headstone for himself and reported feeling as though someone or something had pushed him. The friends left the cemetery and later learned that the hand on the headstone points downward at sunset. The headstone with the hand has since became well known in the paranormal community and was eventually replaced in 2007. Number 1. The Smutty Nose Murders The Smutty Nose Murders, also known as the Haystack Murders, occurred on the small island of Smutty Nose off the coast of New Hampshire in 1873. The victims were two young women. Anith Christensen and Karen Christensen, and a third woman, Marin Hauntvet, who managed to escape despite being severely injured. The killer, Luis Wagner, was a fisherman who had been hired by the woman's brother, John Hanvet, to work on their fishing schooner. On the night of the murders, Wagner broke into the woman's home and attacked them with a hatchet. Anith and Karen were killed, while Marin managed to escape and seek help from their neighbors. Wagner was eventually arrested and eventually convicted of the murders despite denying his guilt and claiming that he had an alibi. He was sentenced to death and hanged in 18. And the Smutty Nose murders became a sensation at the time with newspapers across the country covering the trial and the subsequent execution of Wagner. Ever since, many believe that the island is haunted by the spirits of these two women. As the reports kept coming in, the island became more popular which eventually inspired Anita Shreve's novel, The Weight of Water, just for those who want to read more about them. Number 10, The Death of Julia Lagarde. Back in the mid-1800s, a young woman named Julia Lagarde was visiting family and then suddenly fell ill. 
She slipped into a coma shortly after, and despite her family's hopes and prayers, she never woke up from it. The family physician declared her dead, and Julia was lovingly dressed for her funeral. In those days, there was no embalming fluids or preservation methods, so the ceremonial activities surrounding death were conducted at a very rapid pace. Julia was buried on the same day as her death, with loved ones paying their last respects. Her little body was taken to the family mausoleum, and the door was closed and locked. But 15 years later, another death in the family required the mausoleum to be opened once again. And to the horror of the family, they discovered that Julia's remains were crumpled at the foot of the mausoleum door. So basically, she had been buried alive. It was believed that the family physician was wrong and that she was in a deep coma where her respiratory and heart rates dropped precariously low. The tragedy of Julia's death led to a strange phenomenon that still continues to this day. The door of the mausoleum would open and close by itself. Chains and unbreakable locks were used to keep it sealed, but they would always break somehow. As recently as 50 years ago, they put a door that could only be removed by industrial heavy machinery, and even that door was opened. It is said that Julia's spirit guards a mausoleum, making sure no one dares put a door back on the building that killed her all those years ago. Visitors to the church head to the cemetery every year to take a look at the mausoleum, and some claim to have captured mysterious images on their camera. Number nine, boo hags. In South Carolina's Gula culture, there is a folklore creature called the boo hag. According to legend, boo hags are similar to vampires, but instead of nourishing blood, they feed off a person's breath by riding their victims. And it kind of looks something like this. And I know it looks like something else, but remember, there is nothing pleasurable about this. The Buhaks are said to have no skin, which gives them this red appearance. So they will steal a victim's skin and use it as a disguise while they're out riding. They will then remove and hide the skin before they return home. The Buhag usually gain access to a victim's home by finding small openings like cracks or holes in the wall, and then they position themselves above the sleeping victim and just suck their breath. This makes the victims helpless and induces a very deep sleep. They tend to leave the victim alive so they could just use them again. However, if the victim struggles, the hag may just take their skin, leaving the victim to suffer, or worse, just die. After taking the victim's energy, the hag just flies off, as they must be in their skin before dawn or be trapped without skin. Victims of the creature may wake up feeling tired or short of breath, but that's only if you're lucky to be alive. There's an expression that's often used in South Carolina saying, don't let the hag ride you, which refers to this legend. It is also believed that placing a broom beside your bed before sleeping would prevent the hag from riding as it would distract the hack into counting the straws and would not get to ride the person before the sunrise. So don't forget, keep your brooms by your bed. Number eight, Lavinia Fisher. Lavinia Fisher, born in 1793, is considered to be the first widely recognized female serial killer in the United States. Though her birth location and maiden name are unknown, her story has been passed down through generations as a cautionary tale. Legend has it that Fisher and her husband, John, operate a hotel called the Six Mile Wayfarer House near Charleston, South Carolina in the early 1800s. As as time went by, men visiting Charleston began to disappear, and it was determined that they were last seen at this hotel. Despite an investigation by local authorities, no evidence was found to connect the Fishers to the crimes, so the investigation was cold and just dropped. But more people would disappear, and all the leads just brought them back to this hotel. Just for background information, Lavinia was known for her beauty and her charm, and had been using these qualities to lure in unsuspecting male travelers to their hotel. There, they would rob and proceed to murder them after. For example, John Peoples, a traveler from Georgia, stopped at the hotel and was warmly greeted by Lavinia. She invited him in for tea and a meal, but he soon started feeling really uncomfortable with all the information he had provided and worried he might become a target for robbery. He managed to escape and flee to authorities in Charleston, and this is when the Fishers were finally arrested. They searched the entire hotel and the authorities found evidence of dozens of travelers, a tea laced with an herb that can put someone for sleep for hours, and a mechanism that could be triggered to open the floorboards beneath the bed. And when they went into the basement, they found as many as hundreds of sets of human remains. The Fishers pleaded not guilty, but were ordered to stay in jail until their trial. Then in May 1820, they were found guilty and sentenced to death by hanging. Number seven, the lizard man of Scape or Swamp. Deep in the swampland of Bishopville, South Carolina, lies a reptilian creature that has terrorized the state since the 1980s. The lizard man of Scape or Swamp, also known as the lizard man of Lee County, has been reported to inhabit this area for decades, leaving many to wonder about its existence. The first sighting began in July 1988 when the Lee County Sheriff's Office investigated a report of a car damage overnight in the area of Browntown. The car
car had tooth marks, scratches, and muddy footprints left behind, which was very odd to begin with, but this eventually kickstarted the entire legend. Prompted by this news, a 17-year-old local named Christopher Davis reported to the sheriff as well, saying that his car was damaged by a creature two weeks prior. He described the creature as being seven feet tall with green wet-like skin, three fingers, red eyes, and snake-like scales. This claim of encountering the creature set off a media frenzy. Newspapers, radio, and television stations started to report on the story. Local businesses even began selling Lizardman t-shirts and the local chamber of commerce encouraged the media attention as good for the community. A local radio station even offered $1 million for a reward for anyone who's able to capture the creature alive. However, with time, reports of the sightings gradually declined and law enforcement officials speculated that the sightings were likely to just be a bear. But a bear and a lizard are significantly two different creatures, so who knows what these people just saw. Number six, the gray man. Palsy Island in South Carolina is a summer resort town that boasts of beautiful beaches, tranquil marshes, and historic homes. But beyond its natural beauty, it is also home to a mysterious legend of the Gray Man, who is a figure said to appear on the breach prior to every single major hurricane that has struck the island for more than 200 years. According to the locals, seeing the Gray Man is a sign of danger for impending storms, obviously for hurricanes as we just mentioned. Eyewitness accounts vary, but most people describe the Gray Man as a figure dressed in all gray clothing. Obviously, they appear on the breach either stepping out of the dunes or waving to boaters from the shore before vanishing without a word. The majority of the sightings have occurred in Palsy Island, but there's also been reports of sightings in other coastal towns nearby. One of the most famous encounters with the Gray Man took place in 1989, just two days before Hurricane Hugo came about. Locals Jim and Clara Moore were just taking a walk on the beach when they saw a lone figure walking towards them. As he got closer, Jim raised his hand to say hi, but the figure disappeared right before his eyes. Their home suffered little damage during the storm and Claire attributes this to their good fortune to the Gray Man and the Lord. The next time you're on vacation in Palsy Island, keep an eye out for the Gray Man. And remember, if you see him, it might be wise to heed his warning and seek shelter. In the hump of our list, we have the Third Eyed Man. If you didn't know, the University of South Carolina is home to a network of mysterious underground tunnels known as the Catacombs. And no, not the one from Paris, but still pretty creepy. These tunnels in the university have a rich history dating back to the 1800s, where it is said to have been used for the Civil War. But beneath the surface of these historical tunnels lies a dark legend, one that has kept students and locals alike on edge for decades. The Third Eyed Man is said to be a mutant humanoid creature who resides in the catacombs. The first documented sighting of the bizarre creature was on November 12, 1949, when a student at the university spotted a strange man entering the sewer manhole outside Long Street Theater. The student Christopher Nichols wrote about his encounter in the campus newspaper, dubbing the creature as the Sewer Man, although this is not really confirmed as there is no mention of this in the newspaper archives. The following year, the Third Eye Man was spotted once again, this time by a university police officer. The officer saw scattered chicken remains all around the loading dock of Long Street Theater, and here is when he saw a strange man hunch over them, described as having a grotesque and distorted feature with a third eye in the center of his forehead and silver skin. Number four, the ghost hound of Goshen Hill. The ghost hound of Goshen is a creature that is said to lurk on Buncombe Road between the Ebenezer Church in Newberry County and the Goshen Hill in Union County in South Carolina. This ghostly hound is known to chase anyone who dares to trespass its territory, but fortunately it has never caught anyone. As far as we know. The origin of the ghost hound is shrouded in complete mystery, but some say it was once a pet of a peddler who was falsely accused of murder and hanged. His dog, unable to accept the loss of his master, is said to have remained by his grave until it died of starvation or was said to have been killed by townsfolk. The first recorded sighting of the ghost hound happened in 1855. A young houseworker who was sent to fetch a doctor was terrified by an enormous white dog that followed him all the way to the doctor's home, as well as claiming it was the largest dog he has ever seen. The doctor dismissed the boy's story, but it wasn't long before more and more people had encounters with the hound. Number three, the Poinsett Bridge. The Poinsett Bridge, located in the northern mountains of Greenville County, South Carolina, is a historical bridge that is considered to be the most haunted bridge in the state as well. The bridge is believed to have been designed by Robert Mills, who is a native of South Carolina and an architect of many notable buildings, such as the Washington Monument and the U.S. Treasury Building. And it is also named after Joel Ponset, a politician from South Carolina who served as a president of the state's board of public works during its construction. But the Poinsett Bridge is not just famous for its history and architecture, but also for its paranormal activity. There are stories of workers falling ill and dying during its construction, with legends saying that a body is buried within the bridge. Others claim that 
ghostly workers from Ireland return to visit the bridge at night, while another legend tells of a man who was shot and killed on the bridge in 1861, whose headless body returns on rainy nights. Visitors have reported ghostly encounters, eerie sounds, and sudden car troubles. And to add to its validity, Poinsett Bridge is considered one of the 30 most haunted places in America by the CN Traveler. Number 2. Morgan Island Morgan Island, also known as Monkey Island, is a small island located off the coast of South Carolina in the United States. It is home to a species of monkey that were introduced to the island in the 1970s for scientific research. The monkeys quickly adapted to their new environment and their population grew rapidly. Today, there is an estimated 4,000 monkeys living on this island. While the monkeys may seem cute and harmless, they can be aggressive and have been known to attack visitors to the island. And to make matters worse, they say the monkeys are naturally infected with herpes B, which is completely dead to us. As a result, the island is off limits to the public and can only be visited with permission from the research facility that manages the monkey population. In addition to the monkeys, Morgan Island is home to a variety of other wildlife that may scare you. This includes alligators, snakes, and all sorts of poisonous and venomous creatures. And obviously, only researchers are allowed here. And funny enough, their first rule when they come here is to not get peed on by the monkeys because it can literally be fatal. Number one, battery carriage house. If you're a paranormal enthusiast and you're in Charleston, South Carolina, you may consider staying a night at the Battery Carriage House Inn, which is known to be the most haunted hotel in the city. The Battery Carriage House Inn has a rich history dating back to 1843 when it was purchased by Samuel N. Stevens, who is a prosperous lender and a broker of crops. The property has changed hands several times over the years, including during the Civil War when it was used as a defense base against Union intruders. The last owner, Andrew Simons, was a phosphate mining businessman and the founder of the First National Bank of South Carolina. Today, the hotel is owned by Drayden Hasty, the great-great-grandson of Andrew Simmons. The inn's haunted reputation is not to be taken lightly too, as there has been multiple ghostly encounters reported by guests and staff members alike. Room 8 is said to be the most haunted with a headless torso ghost that is said to be sitting in the middle of the room. Guests say this ghost meets them during some nights and even growls at them. Room 10 is also said to be visited by a gentleman ghost who crawls into the bed with female guests and disappears through a built-in entertainment unit when confronted. The hotel staff also speculates that the ghost in room 8 may be a Civil War soldier who is the victim of a munition accident. The ghost in room 10, however, is said to be the spirit of a man who has an untimely death at the inn. Would you stay a night at this hotel? Because I probably wouldn't. At a pretend spot, we have the Roswell accident. This case is probably one of the most well-known cases, but it is said that the remains of the crash UFO remains inside of Area 51. For those who have no idea about the Roswell incident, the story goes that on July 8, 1947, a UFO was spotted by several people in the area of Roswell, New Mexico. One of these people included a rancher named W.W. Brazel. Brazel would report the sightings immediately to the local authorities, who then sent out a team to investigate. The team arrived at the crash site and found a large circular object that was unlike any other they had seen before. At first, the authorities believed the UFO was a weather balloon, but they soon realized that the object was made of some kind of metallic material that was completely unlike anything that had ever been seen before. They had also found strange symbols and markings on the object, which further fueled speculation about its origins. The authorities were tight-lipped about the incident, and it wasn't until several days later that the media got wind of what had happened. Soon, the story of the UFO crash of Roswell made headlines around the world, with many people speculating about the possible origins of the strange object, but in the end, there is no solid evidence if there ever was an alien here, but apparently they're in Area 51. Number 9, we have Bob Lazar. Bob Lazar is a controversial figure in the world of UFO enthusiasts. This is because he claimed to have worked on reverse engineering extraterrestrial technology at a site called S4, which is located inside of Area 51. In his interviews, Lazar claimed to have seen nine flying saucers of extraterrestrial origin at S4, and he had also said that the technology used for propulsion was based on the manipulation of gravity, which cannot be done. Many of you will find this story intriguing because of the secrecy surrounding Area 51. However, the mainstream scientific community had largely dismissed his claims, and the US government had not officially acknowledged the existence of Area 51 at that time, or any sort of connection to extraterrestrial technology. Obviously. Additionally, many of the people he named as colleagues and supervisors at S4 had denied knowing him or working with him. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, the idea these flying saucers are in Area 51 has been up for debate. Do you believe his claims, or is he just another guy looking for attention? Or was this some sort of top secret American aircraft no one knows about? 
who knows? Number eight, weather control. Since many people believe that Area 51 produces state-of-the-art inventions, they also believe that they have a device that has the ability to control the weather. Yeah. And this theory has been speculated among Americans for years. And I bet most of you believe in this theory as well. To give more evidence to this, this wouldn't be the first time America dipped their toes in weather alternating projects. Introducing Project Storm Fury. Project Storm Fury was a large scale research project conducted by the US government in the 1960s and 70s with the goal of improving the understanding and ability to predict and control hurricanes. The project was carried out by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, and involved a team of researchers who conducted a series of experiments in which various weather modification techniques were used in an attempt to weaken hurricanes as they approached land. These techniques included seeding the clouds of a hurricane with silver iodide in order to stimulate the formation of rain and disrupt the storm circulation, as well as flying aircraft into the eye walls of hurricanes to gather data and perform other experiments. So if Area 51 produced high tech like many believe, there is no doubt whether a manipulation device would exist in this place. At our number 7 spot, we have Interrogation Center. Many people claim that Area 51 is a place the US government interrogated an alien species, and they also say they keep them in the underground facilities below. Supposed Area 51 scientist Bob Lazar strengthens this argument as well. He claims to have remembered catching a monetary glimpse of a small gray extraterrestrial between two guys wearing white coats while being led down a hallway at S4. He said he saw this through a tiny window. Then when he tried to get a closer look, a guard pushed him and ordered him to stop gazing and continue moving. Then another supposed worker of Area 51 named Victor claimed to have witnessed an alien interrogation in a 1997 radio broadcast. In the same interview, he supplied a blurry image that shows a human officer attempting to speak telepathically with a little extraterrestrial pilot who had been shot down by the American military. The footage is in the documentary named Area 51 The Alien Interview which is in 1997 and he explains the encounter in much detail. So if you want a better understanding, go check that out. Number 6, we have the Majestic 12. Apart from all alien conspiracies going on in Area 51, another group of people believe that Area 51 is the home for a secret one world government. The government is known as the Majestic 12. Majestic 12, known as MJ-12 or Magic 12, is the name of an alleged secret committee of scientists, military leaders, and government officials that were supposedly formed in 1947 by the executive order of President Harry S. Truman. The name Majestic 12 comes from the set of documents that were allegedly leaked in 1984 which claimed to be a briefing on the formation of the group. The purpose of the group was to investigate UFO sightings and recover any sort of extraterrestrial technology that was found, or that's what they want you to think. The existence of this group has never been confirmed. Some people believe that the group was formed to cover up the truth about aliens, while others believe that it was a hoax created to mislead the public. However, these documents have been extensively studied and widely believed to be fraudulent. To go further in this rabbit hole and go back to aliens, others believe that the whole reason for Majestic 12 was to set up a trade opportunity with aliens, in which they already have. In the Humphrey list, we have the home of the black helicopters. Area 51 is known to have extremely advanced vehicles, but many people suggest that they also contain black helicopters. According to the black helicopter theory, shady government agencies are using these black helicopters to carry out secret operations such as surveillance and military operations in an effort to control and manipulate the entire population. Some even believe that these helicopters are equipped with advanced technology such as mind control devices and are being used to carry out experiments on unsuspecting civilians. Others suggest these helicopters have the ability to fill an entire cloud with poisonous gases and all sorts of other toxins. And if this did exist, this wouldn't be the first time the US government hid their aircraft projects. Because Area 51 actually produced radar evading stealth technology utilized by the MH-60 Black Hawk helicopters in the attack on Osama bin Laden in the early 1990s. At a number 4 spot, we have Travis Walton. Alien abduction time! So, in 1975, Travis Walton was working as a logger in Arizona when he claimed to have been abducted by a UFO. He was with a group of other loggers at the time and they had all witnessed the UFO before it whisked him away. After being missing for 5 days, Walton reappeared with a strange story of having been taken aboard the UFO and subjected to a series of medical examinations by the aliens. He claimed he was taken to a somewhat operation room with 3 short bald headed figures where he started to panic and fight them off. And this is when a human looking figure took him to another room where he passed out and then all of a sudden reappeared on a highway completely nude. 
The incident gained widespread attention and was even investigated by the US Air Force. Many people were skeptical of Walton's story and some had even suggested that he may be fabricating the whole thing. However, the other loggers who were there with Walton at the time of the incident all swore that they saw the UFO and believed that Walton was telling the truth. The story was later made into a book and film named Fire in the Sky in 1993. So go check it out. And to this day, people are still divided on the truth of Walton's story. And the incident remains one of the most well-known UFO abduction cases in history. Number three, we have a fake moon landing. It is said that the US government was very desperate to beat Russia in the race to space. This theory essentially states that the US faked the landing on the moon with Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin acting out their mission on a secret film set, which is said to have taken place in the Hollywood Hills or Area 51. Theorists have said that filmmaker Stanley Kubrick could have helped NASA fake it because of his 1968 film, 2001, A Space Odyssey, which proved that the technology existed to then artificially create a space-like set. Here is a supposed video of him landing on the moon. So why is this flag moving? There is no wind in space. That's the biggest question, right? Now this next part is a little bit dark. So apparently Virgil I. Grissom, Edward H. White, Roger B. Shafi were three astronauts who died in a fire while testing some equipment for the first moon mission. It's rumored that they were executed by the US government because they were scared that they would say something that would reveal the truth, which is that Neil Armstrong never actually landed on the moon and it was all a movie set in Area 51. Number two, time travel. There's a news video from 1989 of a radio show of a man claiming to be from the year 2019. He says during the radio show how in 2019, people were talking about storming Area 51. Remember what I talked about earlier? The host on the radio show then asked, what is Area 51? The man also talks about Facebook, which again had not been invented till 2003, when it was called Face Smash till 2004, when they changed the name to Facebook. The man said he didn't want to storm the base and there were shooting sounds and tons of people and everyone was screaming and running. But he said he went into the base anyway to find shelter from all the shooting. And he ended up climbing into a trap door to hide. He started to hear weird noises and felt pain coming out of his chest and saw what he described as a bright liquid light. And then he woke up in an abandoned school building in Ohio and he realized it was the year 1971. So what do you guys think, hoax or real? At a number one spot, we have Operation Plum Bob. Operation Plum Bob was a series of nuclear tests conducted by the United States at the Nevada test site in 1957. The tests were a key part of the US nuclear weapons program and were designed to provide data on the effects of nuclear explosions and to develop new weapon designs. The test was the largest and most controversial series of nuclear tests ever conducted by the US. And it also included a number of significant firsts. The first nuclear powered rocket was tested as part of Operation Plum Bob, as, as was the first airdrop of a nuclear weapon from an airplane. The tests were highly secretive and the US government went to great lengths to keep the details of the test hidden from the public. Despite this, the test had a major impact on the surrounding area and many people living near the Nevada test sites were exposed to dangerous levels of radiation. Despite the controversy surrounding this operation, it was considered a success by the US government and provided valuable data on the effects of nuclear weapons. However, it also served as a reminder of the destructive power of these weapons and the need for caution and restraint in their use. 